The Clunin Foul is a public affairs presentation of 94.1, 620 KHB, 97.5, 770 KFB, 810 WEDO, and 103 KVE. The Clunin Foul. With Eric O'Brien at the engineer's desk, I'm Pat Clunin, opening the book on matters of interest in Pittsburgh's southeastern suburbs. This week, let freedom sing. January the 15th marks the 88th birthday of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., civil rights leader who rose onto the national scene as leader of a bus boycott after the arrest of Rosa Parks in Montgomery, Alabama in 1955. He led a march on Washington in 1963 that was highlighted by his I Had a Dream speech. He won the Nobel Peace Prize for his efforts in 1964 and remained a force in American life until his assassination on April 4, 1968. By 1971, cities and states began observing his birthday as a holiday. In 1983, President Ronald Reagan signed legislation establishing a federal holiday, which by 1992 was set on the third Monday of January. It will be marked this year on January the 16th. Meanwhile, on January the 14th at 7 p.m. at the Ebenezer Baptist Church in the Hill District, and on January the 16th at 7 p.m. at the Byram Theater in downtown Pittsburgh, the 10th annual Let Freedom Sing. And to talk more about that is uh, one of the organizers and one of the leaders of, of it, uh, Chris Rust, who is the music minister at the Allegheny, United Universal, uh, Allegheny Unitarian Universalist Church in Pittsburgh on Pittsburgh's north side. And as I said, one of the volunteers who have put together this program over the past 10 years. Chris, welcome to the Clunin File. Well, thank you for having me. And thank you for being here. Uh, as I said, uh, January the 14th at 7 p.m. at the Ebenezer Baptist Church, and then January the 16th at the Byam Theater. Why two performances? Well, uh, you know, double the pleasure, double the fun. Uh, you know, when... when Groups come together and and uh, and prepare prepare music. It it gives us an opportunity to 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 do it to two different audiences. It gives us an an opportunity to uh, to perform in a both a historically black church, um, and then also on Monday we'll get to perform in a secular venue um, to to sort of show uh, its roots in the African-American church, and then also um, to show that this is a civic holiday, and this is something, the, the, the Martin Luther King legacy is something that uh, belongs to all of us as Americans, regardless of our faith background. Yeah. And um, so we, we wanted to keep it in both contexts. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the reason we, we do it twice. As you say, it is a celebration of unity and diversity through music in honor of Dr. King. It features the Pittsburgh Gospel Choir as well as other area choirs such as those in my area from the McKeesport Area High School and Franklin Regional High School, along with the Greater Pittsburgh Unitarian Universalist Churches, the Heritage Gospel Chorale of Pittsburgh, the Leamington Chorale, Riverview High School, Pittsburgh High School for the Creative and Performing Arts, the vocal talents of Vanessa German, and dance talents, which will be uh, different dance talents on each of these nights. On January the 14th, it will be Trevor Miles and his Trevor C. Dance Collective. And I might add, uh, uh, Trevor Miles does have a root. Uh, uh, he once uh, was involved in Claritin, if, if memory serves me correctly. That's right. He grew up in Claritin and McKeesport. Mm-hmm. And then on uh, January the 16th will be uh, Greer Reed and Reed Dance uh, 2. Uh, is there a reason why two different dance troops were just, as, as you say, maybe uh, uh, some variety and give people a chance to see maybe a reason to see both performances? Ab absolutely. You've got two really great, um, two really great uh, dance companies that are going to be involved this year. Um, the, the Saturday evening... Uh, Trevor Miles, uh, his emphasis comes more out of the hip hop background, um, and and he's been working with youth throughout the region. But as you mentioned um, early, a few years back, he he sort of 
rose to prominence because of his work um, with the youth in the city of Clareton. Um, he won an NAACP award for, for his work there, and he recently received a, um, a, a really large grant to do youth programs throughout Allegheny County. Um, so, uh, you know, he's one of these people that, that everyone is, is looking to as, as a one to watch for what, what he's doing in the community. And then uh, Greer Reed, who's going to be performing, uh, or her dance company is going to be performing on uh, Monday evening. Um, she, she's coming at it from more of a modern dance perspective. Um, and of course, in, informed by um, by African American dance traditions, um, you know Greer Greer is a celebrated um, and a seasoned artist who's who's been in Pittsburgh and doing great work for for many many years. Um, you know she was a she was a member of the the Alvin Ailey Dance Company in New York, and um, you know has has quite an extensive background in terms of her formal training and her experience. And uh, many of us got to enjoy the August Wilson Center Dance Ensemble, um, which, was, which was in existence from 2009 to um, 2000, uh, gosh, for, for I think four years. Um, and uh, before the before the closing of the the August Wilson Dance uh, August Wilson Center, um, and that group won national acclaim. They were cited by um, the National Dance Magazine as as uh, one of the top twenty five groups to work to watch in two thousand twelve. So she's she's uh, she's done incredible work. They performed with us at Let Freedom Sing before. Um, and, uh, you know, we're really looking forward to her performance on Monday at the Biome. Um, you know, Trevor's group is, he's more of an up and coming guy coming out of the, the, the hip hop tradition, self-taught. Um, so it's very different experiences, but I think they're both going to be great. Uh, tell you a little more about Trevor Miles, if I may. As you say, self-taught uh, powerhouse artist. Um, he began dancing at age 17, and after trying African and modern dance, he quickly began to develop his own style. It's a hip-hop uh, dominated the early years of his career as he created signature routines and stories of depth, and that's D-E-P-T-H, depth. Uh, he, uh, as he connected with other dancers across the region, he also began teaching a variety of sites, such as the Urban Pathways Charter School, which I believe is in Pittsburgh, uh, the mm -hmm. Thelma Lavette y w YMCA, I should say, and as you mentioned, the Clareton City School District. You yourself have a, a route uh, here in the eastern suburbs uh, uh, in a school district too, if 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 I read correctly in some of the. That's regions. right. You were at Franklin Regional. Tell me about that. Yeah, so I was at Franklin Regional for 21 years, um, and uh, so I got to know the Murraysville community, Murraysville Export in Delmont, um, right over the county line in Westmoreland County. I uh, got to know the eastern suburbs and the, the, the communities in Westmoreland County during my time there. Um, yeah, and it was a great experience. I am now at uh, Point Park University and at the Allegheny Unitarian Universalist Church. Um, but I'm happy to say that Franklin Regional is going to continue to um, to participate this year. Um, my the the person who took took the role as the high school choral director. Her name is Kelly Newstead. Um, she comes from a successful um, tenure at a at a high school in Maryland, and uh, she's come home to Pennsylvania. She's a native of uh, of the Hempfield School District, and so she's come back to Western Pennsylvania and um, has taken the helm at Franklin Regional. And so I'm really glad to have them back. Um, you know, and part of part of the reason that I that I uh, started Let Freedom Sing so many years ago was working in in the suburbs, but also in the city. I, I just felt like um, 
the the Martin Luther King holiday was sort of regarded as a a random day off and and I felt like you know here we have this amazing American hero in the person of Martin Luther King and uh, and all that he stood for means so much to me and I think to to most Americans, I think we embrace the, the values that he stood for of um, uh, overcoming segregation, bringing people together, celebrating diversity, fighting against poverty, um, fighting for peace in our world. In summation, uh, as you put it, uh, a vision of brotherhood. Yes, exactly, and and I think this is these are values that that um, that we need to embrace and and lift up every chance we get and what better time to do it than on the the national holiday set aside for for doing exactly that so i wanted to see us do more and i and i um i've always felt like like segregation is a huge problem even today in our country if you if you look at our our own region um our communities are segregated along racial lines along economic lines um, along lines of ideology, and uh, you know, I think the only way we overcome that is by intentionally bringing ourselves together. And so, for at least this one weekend, um, we we do that. We bring uh, we bring singers from across the region. We bring audience members together, um, and that all started uh, those that vision um, was one I cultivated with my co-founders. Dr. Herbert Jones and Vanessa German um, 10 years ago, uh, you know, while I was the, the director of choirs at Franklin Regional High School. So it was, a, you know, bringing that suburban perspective um, in with a urban perspective and bringing communities together. Chris Rust, who is the music minister at the Allegheny Unitarian Universalist Church, and as I mentioned, he's a, as he mentioned, a former uh, choir director at Franklin Regional High School, which is one of the high schools which is involved in Let Freedom Sing, which will take place on January the 14th at the Ebenezer Baptist Church in the Hill District, and on January the 16th at the Byam Theater in downtown Pittsburgh. He is my guest on this edition of the Clunan File. And uh, one more angle to this area, if, if I may, Chris, is the fact that um, uh, the admission is uh, very simply uh, what you uh, want to give at, at least a dollar uh, more, we would hope, uh, toward mm -hmm. uh, the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank, which is in Duquesne, and the Westmoreland County Food Bank in Delmont, which uh, gets a lot of volunteer effort from this area. Why the food banks? Well, the food banks do such such great and important work in our community, and, uh, you know, you, you go to their website and uh, you can read all about the, the great need and the growing need um, that, that there is uh, for, for fighting hunger right here in our own backyard. Um, so, you know, we wanted to, to, to pick something that was local um, and that was in keeping with Dr. King's values of, of fighting for for those who um you know who are in need and uh so that yeah it seemed like a that was something that that we all could easily agree on now this is a as you say this is a labor of love but there are a number of um groups and organizations that have backed you up as well am i correct about that that's that's exactly right um you know all of the all of the school districts of course are um you know putting resources into getting their students here and getting them prepared and of course um you know the the teachers who are um in these in these school districts are are uh, giving of their time so that their students can participate um the churches that are involved in particular Ebenezer Baptist Church is opening their doors um to to us um to, to make this to make it possible for us to rehearse and perform there, um, yeah, and then we have tremendous financial support from UPMC and Dollar Bank, um, 
we you know we we couldn't pull off this this move to the Biome Theater this year, um, you know, with the the costs that that are involved with a a venue of that nature, with um, you know the professional production level um, that that we have there, and the cultural trust, um, you know, has been supportive with by giving us the the nonprofit rate to be there. Um, we've we've had tremendous media support um, from uh, from WESA and WYP. That'll that'll actually be you'll be hearing us on the radio for in this on those two stations. Uh, there are media sponsors, um, and we've had tremendous assistance from New Place Communications. This is a, a local, locally owned and operated. Um, communications firm. They spot, specialize in working with nonprofits and arts organizations, and they've donated donated so much of their time and expertise to um, to helping us spread the word about the concerts and to, to get them off the ground. Um, and then, not to mention all of the professional artists, um, you know, the, Greer Reed and Trevor Miles, um, and of course my co collaborators. Um, Dr. Herbert Jones and Vanessa German, um, highly sought-after artists, um, but who artists who believe in what we're doing enough to to donate their time to, to be part me, of this and to really make it something wonderful. Can you tell me a bit more about? Uh, well, let's start with uh, your uh, the two people that you're working with. Uh, tell me a little bit about Vanessa German and tell me about uh, uh, Dr. Herbert as well. Would you please? Sure, sure. So Vanessa German is an amazing force in the in first in the Pittsburgh community, but really um she has in recent years she has gotten nationwide acclaim both for her uh for her visual art. She's primarily a sculptor, um and also for her, her performance art. She's a spoken word artist, a poet. Um, she has, uh, she's, her work has been, um, included in recent Smithsonian exhibitions. She just this year, um, was the featured artist in a solo exhibition of, um, at, at the Wadsworth Athenaeum Museum of Art in Hartford, Connecticut. And, uh, that museum is, is famous for, identifying sort of the next great talent, if you will, and on the uh, national art scene. Um, you know, they, they're, they're one of the first museums to have shown the work of Andy Warhol um, 40 years ago. Um, so she's really getting all kinds of national recognition for her, for her visual art. But also for her performance art, she's been invited to um, to Harvard and to MIT and to give TED talks all over the country to to speak and to address um, address crowds all over the country. Um, so we're we're so fortunate to have her here in Pittsburgh. She's uh, she lives and works in Homewood. Um, she founded the Art House in Homewood. And the Love Front Porch movement, and with that, the the art house is a is a place where where children and youth um, they can come after school and during the summer um, to create art. She creates a safe space um, and a um, a stimulating space that that students can come. She she provides materials um, and cookies, <laughs> um, and uh, fresh fruit. They, they've, they've started growing vegetables there. Um, it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing, thing that she's doing in Homewood um, to, to spread the appreciation for art. Um, so we're so fortunate to have her. She does an amazing job channeling Martin Luther King, um, who we all know was a great orator. Everyone's heard the, the uh, I Have a Dream speech. Um, but but Vanessa has listened to dozens of his speeches, and um, you know she she repurposes his words 
um, and to, to give them a new structure and uh, new meaning for, for our concerts. She does an amazing job. She, she transitions between musical selections and, um, and, and uh, is inspiring to everyone. Now, Dr. Dr. Jones... Um, did you have a, something? No, 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 no. I was, I was going to ask you about your other collaborator, but you were you were going yeah. ahead. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Jones, uh, he's the director of the Heritage Gospel Chorale of Pittsburgh. Um, so, another another Pittsburgh treasure that we have in uh, in Dr. Jones. He has. Uh, he has his doctorate in choral music from the University of Mississippi. He worked all across the South and still goes back uh, to the South to do choral workshops. He travels um, to the Midwest and really all over the country um, doing workshops on African-American music. Um, he, he's he's a, one of the leading experts on African-American choral music um, in our country. Um, and it's it's an amazing experience for you know the singers to get to to come and and work with him for an afternoon, um, and and he pulls the he pulls the the performance together um, there in, in in one afternoon. Quite an amazing individual. As mentioned, there's a number of uh, scholastic um, uh, choirs involved, the Pittsburgh High School for the Creative and Performing Arts, Riverview High School, Franklin Regional, uh, McKeesport area. What typically uh, might one of these uh, choirs be doing um, in either performance? Um, uh, are, are, is, it, is it a joint performance or are these individual performances? Yeah. Tell me about yeah, it. Yeah, it's a, it's a joint performance. Um, the, the Heritage Gospel Chorale, they are... The, the lead choir that's dr dr jones's choir and that group uh that group is the only uh the the only community-based uh ensemble that is sort of dedicated to the the broad range of african-american music that's their mission um and and that's the group that that dr jones founded um just a few years ago and uh they are sort of our core group, core choral group, if you will, um, for the concert, and they will perform a, a set of, of choral pieces at the at the first part of the program. Um, but the the concert will conclude uh, with a, a, a performance by a huge choir made up of. Singers from all the cho- all the choirs that you've mentioned, um, the, the high school choirs, the um, the church choirs, um, and the Heritage Gospel Choir, and and I have to also give a shout out to the Lemington Chorale, Please which do. will which will be joining us, and that group is uh, directed by um, the Mon Valley native and personality Derek Tynes. We're so fortunate to have. Um, to have so many amazing artists and gifted individuals who are who are uh, participating in this, and Derek is one of those one of those individuals. He's uh, many people in the Mon Valley will know him from his work with his mother's church. His mother is the pastor at um, the Living Waters Church in Clareton. Uh, the Reverend Thelma Mitchell. And uh, Derek is Derek is uh, he's the leader of the Lymington Chorale and the board chair of the Afro American Music Institute. He just uh, is preparing to release his first CD. Another amazing individual who's in, who's involved in this. So um, anyway, these all these choirs come down come together at the end of the concert, and we. Uh, we do a, a big finale. We'll we'll perform five choral selections, um, and uh, it, it's it's a wonderful thing to to see such a diverse group from fourteen year olds to ninety year olds um, on stage from all different 
backgrounds and communities um, across our region. And to, to see them come together on, on Saturday the 14th, rehearse together for three hours, um, and then get up on stage on the evenings of the 14th and the 16th, it's a, just a, a beautiful thing what they're, what, what they're able to do in just a short time. Now, uh, a question here is uh, you, uh, <clears throat> as, I, as I said, it, it's a free will offering uh, a dollar plus. Well, it's not really a free will, but I mean, they're asking you to at least bring one dollar for these food banks and hopefully more. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, I'm, I'm presuming that, that this is a um, the door is open and uh, there's no advanced ticket sale per se. That's that's actually not quite true for um, the Biome concert. Let me explain the, 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 the concert on the 14th at Ebenezer Baptist Church. Um, you are exactly right. The doors are open. People will come in, seat themselves, and we will take up an offering um, in the, at, during the course of the concert. Um, the, uh, the concert at the Biome is being handled through the Cultural Trust, just like any event. So people can go online. They can pick their seats. The uh, the least expensive seats, as you've pointed out, are one dollar. Um, but if people are willing to donate more, and we hope they will, um, they can they can choose a more expensive seat. Um, so you will need a ticket to get into the concert at the Biome Theater. Um, you can purchase in advance by going to the uh, Cultural Trust website, um, or you can call the the Cultural Trust box office. Um, which is 412-456-6666. Would you repeat um, that phone number? Sure. 412-456-6666. Um, but you can also just show up on the night of the concert and buy your ticket there at the Biome Theater box office um, and, and do it that way. Now, um, can you get a link to the uh, Cultural Trust through your website, which I think is, if memory serves me correctly, it's letfreedomsing.net. Um, .net. Thank you. Um, right. Yes, you got it. Yes, we have a link to, um, we, we have all of that information on our website, letfreedomsing.net. And you can also find us on Facebook. Um, you can just, just search open up Facebook and search Let Freedom Sing, Celebration of Dr. Martin Luther King. Um, and, uh, yeah, you can you can find us on Facebook. And uh, just a, a quick question. We're coming down toward the end of our time. Um, one uh, question which I kind of uh, wanted to ask and I haven't had a chance to is, uh, 10 years ago, what happened to bring everything together then? And I'm going to presume that uh, you have built upon whatever – you achieved 10 years ago. Am I right about that? Yes. Um, <clears throat> well, as I mentioned before, I, it's something that I had, I had, I've been concerned with for a while, <laughs> you know, looking at, at, uh, division and strife mm -hmm. in our country and, and being aware of segregation, um, and how individual communities can lack diversity. Um, and so those were things that bothered me uh, for, for years. Um, and I, you know, had been sort of thinking about ways to, um, to speak to that, to address that, to overcome that. Um, and so really, uh, my friendship with Vanessa German, uh, she, she really, she, she, prompted me just through conversations about about um, race relations and talking about, you know, what can we do? And I shared with her the, the idea of, you know, bringing together people through music. And she, she said, that's a beautiful idea. I think you should run with it. And you will be so, running with it if, if because we are now out of time. Okay. <laughs> You'll be running with it uh, on January the 14th at 7 p.m. at the Ebenezer Baptist Church that's in the right. Hill District. And on January the 16th at 7 p.m. at the Byam Theater in downtown Pittsburgh. My thanks again to Chris Rust, who is the music minister at the Allegheny Unitarian Universalist Church on Pittsburgh's north side. Uh, you... 
Our purpose is to focus on issues in the Monarch area of Allegheny County and assorted areas in Westmoreland County. Uh, you may contact me at pclunan55 at uh, gmail.com. But thanks again to Eric O'Brien for his assistance. I'm Pat Clunan. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to The Clunan File, a public affairs presentation of 94.1, 620 KHB, 97.5, 770 KFB, 810 WEDO, and 103 KBE.